Hey everyone, it's MK. Welcome back to MK Quilts. So today I'm standing at McFusion and I have a beautiful quilt on the frame. And what I wanted to bring to you today is a very short session on cropping. And I'm hoping that you can see in the video here that the quilt on the frame is a round quilt, okay? It's one of those quilts made with a wedge ruler. I believe it's from the book named Quilts Without Corners. So I have this quilt loaded. Of course, I don't have it attached to the bar because there's no uh, there's no straight edge along the bottom. But what that means is, first of all, this customer has chosen a pantograph. So we're keeping it simple. We're not doing custom quilting. But I am going to have to do some custom cropping. And these types of questions come up a lot on the boards about how do you do this custom cropping around maybe items that are too big for your throat depth and how do you position that once you have to advance. So I'm going to give you a couple of my best tips and techniques, a couple of tricks, and I hope that you will be able to use this in a scenario and on a quilt in your studio really soon. So I'm going to actually go inside a simulation and then I'll meet you right back here. All right, let's do it. All right, let's get started. As I normally do, let me just take a second to explain to you what you're looking at on the screen. So the square on the screen is meant to represent the backing that I had loaded and that backing was about 75 inches. Okay, the circle, obviously that's the circle quilt that I was working on. And if I select it over here, you're going to see it was about 49 inches across at its widest point. Okay, the pattern down here is the pattern that I was using. It's a beautiful pattern called confetti. And just a side note, when I worked on this project, I actually worked on it with a pattern that was set up to stitch left to right, right to left, left to right again. That's how I typically handle pantographs in my studio, but I didn't want to make it too confusing for today. And if you want that instruction on my way of doing pantographs, the MK way, you can check out my best practices for pantos video rental on my hosting site. Okay, so I just went ahead and reset this up for today to be uh, three passes with all of the start points on the left. Okay, the reason that I did that is I want to have two passes because that's that's what was going to fit in my throat depth on my fusion. And I wanted to have the third pass as my positioning pass. Okay, and we're going to talk about that a lot. The other thing that you're going to see on the screen today is something new that I'm trying. This little spiral dot right here, I created that in Art and & Stitch. And that today is going to be our little pin marker. Okay, because the pinning and the pre-marking of our start points was how I approached this quilt okay all right so you have to imagine you've stepped up to the quilt your batting and backing is loaded your quilt is basted down and we're ready to go the pattern is open it's wider than I would ever be able to use it well not ever but for this particular case it's wider than I need it and we're gonna do our cropping so first things first let's move our machine into position and again, it's just a little bit off to the left, most part of this quilt, and a little bit off to the top of where I had marked my straight line. I usually stitch a straight line across the top there. Okay, so that's our first two corner. Then we're going to grab our machine. We're going to come down towards our rail. I'm pretending there's a rail there today. And we're going to come over again a little bit off to the side of where the rightmost part of my quilt is. There's my second two corner. Now this is a little tip with how I handle pantographs in my studio. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to resize that area box to be a height regardless of what my actual height was when I when I marked it I'm gonna make that area box be a height that is taller than my pattern just so that I don't crop off the bottom of the pattern and get myself confused and accidentally stitch a cropped off pattern I don't want to do that so I'm just gonna save myself some headache and I'm gonna make that area box taller than this pattern 
okay? The width is what I need. Now I've just made it taller to encompass the pattern, okay? Let's just do modify align now. Let's get that pattern in the center and to the top, okay? Now we don't need everything that's out at the sides right now, so we're just going to modify crop. We're going to close our edges and we're going to choose outside. And let me just zoom into the area and talk you through the next step. Now, what you're looking at on the screen is basically the pattern that we want to use over and over again as we go through this quilt. So I definitely want to save this pattern. But before I do it, I want to address my start points. My choice in my studio is to, if at all possible, try to get this start point towards the top of the pattern. Because we're going to be using start points as positioning markers, I want those positioning markers to be at the top of a pass so that it doesn't run into my rail. And again, if you want much more explanation on how I do all my panto setup, check out my best practices for pantos. For right now, let's just go ahead, modify reposition, and I'm just going to nudge this pattern over a little bit until I can try to get that start point towards the top. Sometimes I can get it towards the top, sometimes I can't, but I'm going to try to get it as close to the top as I can. We're going to stop there today. We're going to call that good enough. We're going to baseline. Now, I need this pattern from now until I'm done with this quilt, so I certainly want to save it. Okay, so we're going to save, and we don't want it called that. I'm going to call it 01 Nancy before. And if you want, again, more information on the way that I name my patterns, you can get the, all that in the other video. Okay, Nancy was the name of my customer, and uh, this is just before, before we're doing any of our cropping along the top or the edges. That's just, just kind of my deal. Okay, now, before we stitch this first pass, we want to we want to do two things. We want to crop off this stuff that's out here, plus we want to fill in this space that is here, this little bit of space right here that's unquilt unquilted. So before we move along, I'm just going to do modify reposition, and I'm going to nudge that pattern up until it fills that unquilted space. The other thing that I'm doing as I'm pressing this or positioning this pattern up is I want to make sure that this third start point is not going to be hitting my rail, okay? Again, in today's video, I don't have a rail as a marker. I suppose I could have dropped one in there, but let's just pretend that I need to move that up a little bit more so that this third start point point is not going to be hitting my rail, okay? When you're at your machine, of course, you would be grabbing your machine, you would be bringing it down towards the rail, and as long as that green circle is above your crosshair, then you know that you're going to be able to get there and put your positioning marker, okay? We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, the pattern's outside of the box, it fills in the space, that looks great, let's crop again. Close the edges, Outside crop, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and baseline. Now again, I, it's just kind of a rule for me that I like to save. I'm actually not gonna, I'm not gonna stitch this particular pattern because we have more cropping to do, but let's just call this, just because I'm a saver, let's just call it Nancy after, which just basically means that it was the crop that I did after I had, uh, you know, addressed the top edge of the quilt. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to crop away this excess pattern that's out here in the batting. It's just we don't need to stitch it. It's going to waste time. It's going to waste thread, and we don't need it. The thing that we are going to need is this start point right there. Okay, that's why I wanted to make double sure that that start point wasn't buried underneath my rail. It's not. We took care of that. So now let's go pro stitcher, new start and end. Let's move our start circle to that third spot and let's run our machine into position so that it does a needle down, needle up. We're going to stop. 
I'm going to refresh so that you can see. I want to grab that little position marker. For you, that's a pin that you're going to put in your quilt right there. So that when you advance after stitching, you know, a pass and a half here at the top, you're going to have that marker, that pin marker in position. Okay, I can't put a pin in my computer, but I can move this little dot up there that I created. Okay, so I'm going to grab it off the workspace. It's just called spiral marker. My machine's into position, and I'm just going to take that marker. You would be taking your pin, and I'm just going to reposition it and snap it on start point. And now it's going to stay there while I move on and do the rest of my cropping. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and zoom into the area so that we can talk through the next part. So now the cropping that we want to do is we want to get rid of this cropping that's out here on the edges. We don't need to stitch that. That's just going to be wasted thread, wasted time. So let's go ahead and clear our area. We're going to go ahead and move our machine into position. Now again, you would be coming down close to your rail. And just as I'm, I'm doing this in simulation, pretending I have a rail here, I'm also noticing that I am beneath the lowest most part of the second pass. So that's exactly what I want. I want to crop some of this off, but I don't want to crop off any of that second pass. That's a full pass that's going to be fitting right in the circle, and so we're good. Okay, so we got uh, simulate. I'm in simulation mode. You have moved your machine into position and we will just start now with our multi-point marking okay and you want to just go a nice good distance out here on the outside of the circle just so that all of that stitching that is going to happen out there it's going to get cropped away and you just don't want the stitching to fall on your quilt. You want it to fall in the batting. Okay, so I'm just marking, just marking a good distance away. Okay, and then again, you would be approaching your rail over here, and I don't have a rail, but I'm just going to pretend that I do, and we'll put the last mark right about there. Okay, we'll just do modify, crop, we'll close the edges, and we'll do outside. And there we have it. The pattern, parts of the pattern that we don't need are gone. Our little pin marker is in the quilt, in simulation that is. For you, your pin would be in the quilt, and now we're ready to stitch. Okay, cardinal rule here, we want to baseline and save because we've done a lot of work right now. We don't want to lose what we've just done. Okay, so I might just call this pass 01. Okay, now, I'm going to let this stitch out for a second just while I talk you through um, this, this partial row that's cropped here. If you wanted to, you could crop out that partial row. Okay, so we have a partial row, number one, that's stitching up here. And then we have a full row, a full, a full row vertically of pass number two that's falling in the middle part of this circle. It did get cropped off a little at the edges. But this third partial pass right here, that is not going to get stitched at all. Okay, it doesn't bother me at all that it's hanging out right there right now because I, I'm never going to get to it. I'm never going to stitch it. However, because we don't want to run the risk of ever stitching it, and because I'm working in simulation and I don't want that in there when I go to explain the next step for you, I'm going to go ahead and crop it out. Okay, so you can leave it in if it doesn't bother you, but I'm going to crop it out just for the purposes of the video so that this pass is not in our, in our visual sight as we move on to do the next step. Okay, so how do we get rid of that third row? Just go to Pro Stitcher, New Start and End, jump that start circle back one row, do modify, crop. This time we're going to do crop start and end, and that'll get that row out of there. Okay, so let's just go ahead and pretend we had done that the first time around. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this over the top of pass one, and we'll just pretend that we did that, and then we would stitch that first pass, we would stitch the second pass. Then it would be time to advance, right?
Okay, our little pin is already in our quilt. It's time to advance. Okay, you can just imagine that for me in simulation, it's kind of hard to advance and, and show you what I want to show you. Okay, so you're just going to pretend that you're advancing. Okay, so I have advanced. I have put my clamps back on. I've basted a little bit more of my quilt. I don't need that area anymore. That's an old area, so let's just get rid of it. And now I'm set to go for my next my next pass, whatever amount will fit in my throat depth for the next pass. Okay, the pin's in there. That's good. Let's go ahead and move our machine over there. We're going to put our machine right on top of that pin. We're going to, and actually, let me just show you a little simulation trick because I want my simulator right on top of that pin. I'm going to select my pin. In this case, it is my spiral marker and I'm going to run my Pro Stitcher simulator into position. Okay, so that'll get me right on top of the pin. In your studio, you would be at your quilt. You would be looking at the pin, so you would just move your machine over there. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and open up that pattern that we said that we needed way back in the beginning when we started this. We said that we were always going to need this Nancy before pattern. That's the one that we need from now till we're done. So we're, we're going to open it. And all of our start points are now, you know, they're fully there. They haven't been cropped off. It's a, it's a full, complete pattern. Two passes is what we're going to need to stitch. That third pass, again, is going to be what we need to reposition. Our machine is already in position. The pattern is open. Start point number one. All we have to do is modify, reposition on start point. Okay, and let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, now we, we would be ready to to mark again okay but before we do that we don't want to lose that third start point again do we that's going to be very critical for us the next time we advance all right well let's go down and get our pin in the quilt so let's go down by doing pro stitcher new start let's skip down to that third start point I'm going to run my machine into position you just want to make sure that you have cleared your rail Always, always, when you're using a start point for a position mark, you want to make sure that you haven't run yourself into the rail, okay? I'm going to go over on the workspace. I'm going to grab that little spiral marker. You would be grabbing your pin and putting it in the quilt. I'm grabbing my pin, the spiral marker, and I'm repositioning it on my start point now, which is where my crosshair is, okay? Because I'm going to need that spot later. Okay, now... I got to go back and select the pattern. You wouldn't have to do that at your quilt because you would be working your quilt. You wouldn't be working in simulation. Okay, here we go. It's time to multi-point mark again. Again, we're pretending we have a rail. So I'm going to go down here and I'm making sure that I'm not cropping off that uh, lowest most part of the second pass. And I'm coming up here and maybe I can zoom in a little bit more so that you can see. Okay, so I'm moving along, and at some point up here, I'm going to hit my rail up here, right? So whenever that happens, that's where I'm going to put my last mark. I'm going to move my machine across. I don't need any marks along the top there in the center. I'm just going to come out here and, and continue on until again, until I hit my rail on the bottom, the bottom rail. Okay, so again, I don't have a rail, but I'm just going to kind of pretend I know where it is. Well, that looks about good. Okay, my new area is created. My pattern is selected. Now I can just do modify crop, close those edges, do an outside crop. And now the extra part of the pattern that I don't need has been cropped away. My pin has already been positioned for me for next time I need to advance. What's the cardinal rule? Yep, you guessed it. Baseline, and let's save this. Whenever, guys, whenever you're doing all of this work, putting in all the time to do that, you want to go ahead and make sure that you save. And whether you save it as a pattern as I'm doing here, or maybe you want to save it as a workspace, that's up to you, but definitely save before you stitch, okay? And then you would be ready to stitch. And basically, you guys, that is what you're going to do 
the entire rest of this quilt. The most important part being, don't ever crop that start point away until you have marked that start point with your pin. And as long as you do that, you're going to be able to use that master pattern that you created, use that third row as your positioning row, and just always put that pin mark at the start point of row number three. Then go back and mark as much as you can mark. You're always going to, you know, run into your rail at the bottom. You're going to run into your rail at the top, but you're going to crop away all of this stuff out here at the edges that you don't need. Okay. I think what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is I'm going to go ahead and finish it out without talking. I'm going to go ahead and have the video go on fast forward just so that you can see all of these steps that I am doing to the end of the quilt. First thing I'm going to do, I should have done it before I started stitching, was crop out this third pass just because for simulation purposes it gets in the way. For you at your quilt, you don't have to crop it out again because you're never going to get to that row to stitch it at this point. You're only going to be be stitching that pass once you've advanced. Okay? Enjoy watching the rest of the video. Okay, you guys, as I'm approaching the bottom here, I'm going to go ahead and stop because we're going to pretend now that we've got to the bottom of our quilt. It's the last pass that we're going to need to do, right? So let me grab my spiral marker. Again, you would be grabbing your pin and putting that into the quilt. I don't have a pin for the computer. Okay, so now we're on our last pass. We're going to pretend that we can mark this last pass, that we're, our rail is down here somewhere and we can mark our last pass. Okay, and actually because we would be on our last pass, it wouldn't be critical that we marked that spot, but just because I want you to see those steps that I'm doing over and over and over again, you know, you go ahead and mark that spot, okay? Then you're going to come in and you're going to do your last round of marking. Okay, at this point, the bottom of your quilt is revealed. You're very happy. You haven't messed up once. You've, you've realized how easy that is just to give yourself a, a pre-marked spot to go to. So basically you have worried about that spot before you've advanced so that you don't have to worry about it after you advance, right? Okay, we're just going to crop one more time, close those edges outside. That's a beautiful thing. Baseline, always want to save before we stitch. And it's our last pass. I guess it's for our purposes today, pass four. There we go. And you would be, at the end, you would be stitching the last few passes of your quilt there. Okay, you guys, that was a little bit on the long side, I know. But just remember that that pin is going to be your friend in this, in this scenario, pre-marking those spots. And then as long as you have created yourself a master pattern that you can use every advance, you are going to be golden. All right, everybody, it's MK. Hope that was helpful. Happy quilting. Bye-bye.
All right, so there you have it. So I'm sitting here on the floor, actually, up close and personal with this quilt, and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. And I think you can see from in the video, it's really not that difficult. If you just slow down and think about pre-marking those start points. You know, you guys, I have said it before, and if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If you can understand start and stop points, it will truly transform the way that you quilt in your studio. If you understand them, you can you can choose new ones, you can crop, you can reposition, you cannot be afraid of your machine shutting off and turning back on and coming back the next day, finding a spot and going again. So I encourage you, do your very, very best to experiment. Experiment with start and stop points, positioning on them, and it will click, I promise you. All right, so thanks for coming along with me on this really quick video. And until next time, everybody, from my studio to yours, happy quilting. Bye-bye.